Hi everyone. In this lecture, what I'm going to do is do what's hopefully a review of some things from chemistry, but that you may have forgotten. This is not going to seem terribly relevant to astronomy at first, but it is going to become important, and you do need to know this vocabulary when it comes time for the tests. So what I want to do is talk about some very basic vocabulary that goes with atoms. And what you're seeing on this page, of course, is a diagram of a carbon atom. I just sort of arbitrarily picked carbon because it's an important element, although it's not the most useful one in astronomy. And this one, of course, is something that has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. What you ought to remember is that down here in the nucleus, what we have are two things. We have the protons, which are positive, and the neutrons, which are neutral in terms of electricity. So the nucleus has a positive electric charge. And then we have the electrons in these places outside. You may have heard of these called electron shells. What you'll hear more often in physics and astronomy is this term, energy levels. Because at each distance out from the nucleus, there's a certain amount of energy. Um, there's an electric potential energy based on there being two charges that are, have some distance between them. And there's some kinetic energy as well because they are orbiting the nucleus and they're moving around in a circle. But in those levels, all the electrons have the exact same amount of energy. So this electron and this electron have the same amount of energy. And then in this level, this one, this one, this one, and this one all have the same amount of energy, but that is different from the amount of energy that this one has. So each distance out from the nucleus has a particular amount of energy. And there are only certain amounts of energy that are allowed for any given atom. We're going to learn how you figure out what those energies are in a few lectures. So, but there's only certain energies that are allowed. You could never have an electron someplace in the middle like this, um, where the energy is, is something different that is not allowed. There's only certain amounts that are allowed here and here, and those correspond to different distances from the nucleus. So again, remember that in the nucleus we have protons and neutrons, and then in these energy levels at particular distances from the nucleus, we find electrons. Now, of course, we have both, or we have all three of these things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And we can imagine atoms that have different numbers of protons. We can imagine atoms that have different number of neutrons. And we can imagine atoms that have different numbers of electrons. And we have a term for each of those situations. Um, as I've said in the past, you may want to pause and write down this information and then listen to the lecture here. The number of protons tells you what element we have. So hydrogen has one proton. Every hydrogen atom in the universe has exactly one proton. Helium has two protons. Lithium has three protons, and so on. If you change the number of the protons in the nucleus, you have a completely different element. So the number of protons is what tells you what element you have. You can't just count on the neutrons or the electrons because those can be different within the same element. And in fact, within a given element, if you have a different number of neutrons, what we call those is isotopes. This is within one element. So we wouldn't talk about helium with two neutrons versus lithium with three neutrons. That's not isotopes. Those are different elements. But uh, if we have two atoms of the same element, so same number of protons, but they have different numbers of neutrons, then those are isotopes. Helium has one with no neutrons, with one neutron, with two neutrons. So we can have two protons and zero neutrons, and that's one isotope of helium. Two protons and one neutron, that's another isotope. Two protons and two neutrons, that's yet another isotope. So each of those is an isotope of helium. And if we have two atoms of the same element, 
that have different numbers of electrons, then we have ions. And ions will often be electrically charged. They'll either be positive or negative because they have extra electrons or extra protons. So again, thinking about helium for an ex example, you can have the most common kind of helium has two electrons. So it has two protons and two electrons. But various things can happen that can take away an electron. We'll talk in here about what some of those things are. If we take away an electron, I still have two protons, so it's still helium, but it's now an ion. Or if I take away both electrons, I still have two protons together, so that's still helium, but this is an ion of helium. So you need to know these three terms and which subatomic particle they're associated with. That's it for this lecture.